Hungering for something new? HelloFresh has got your back. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, your new favorite meal can be prepared in under 30 minutes. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, when you use the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, (laughs) welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you are nasty... I am your host, the budget magician. <laughs> Whoa, what's Whoa. that? Brickadabra. Dude, where'd you get that wand from? It's magic. I'm joined by my best friend, Mr. Guy Fieri. That's right. Mayor of Flavortown, baby. Uh, what's up, everybody? Uh, Mike the Fantasy Man Right, joined by Jason Moore. Uh, it's been quite a ride for us the last 24 hours or so, uh, and yeah, which we will talk about the game, and you're probably wondering, where is Andy? Well, uh, unfortunately, Andy's uh, one of Andy's kids did test positive for COVID, so he is taking care of that. He is being dad. We are pressing on. So that is that's where that is at. Yeah, it's, it's super unfortunate, obviously terribly... Uh, Sad for the family. Yep. Awful timing as well. Andy shaved his face last night. He did. For this episode. And now he just looks stupid. Now he just looks real stupid. And yeah, he's taking care of that. But welcome into the show, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, our special Halloween edition. But look, Andy's not here, but you know who's here? Jay Grizz, the cardboard bear extraordinaire, who also had the dignity to dress up. He's in, got the spirit. In a straw hat. If I'm if I'm reading the room correctly, that I don't I don't know what his his official costume is. I believe he is Farmer Bear. Oh yes, yes, yes. absolutely. Let's check. Yeah, that is that is correct. That is what our stupid cardboard bear is, is up to. This is the over first there. time I've been uh, part of a bear sandwich. Do you remember? Uh, Delicious, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd make a bear sandwich. Yeah, I'd- I guess yeah, because ha, yeah, because I am also part of team bear remember uh country bear jamboree at oh Disneyland? yeah absolutely i never went you never went yeah I, oh you better, saved yourself better the shame. things to do <laughs> so welcome in as i said it is the halloween uh spooktacular i guess that's what people call it if you want to see what we're up to because i mean we look pretty freaking good youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers while you're there click subscribe click the bell so you don't miss a moment you don't miss a video moment you don't miss when we go live Right, go check that out. Follow us on the socials: Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. On Twitter is at the FF Ballers. You can follow Jason at Jason FFL. I am at FF Hitman, and Andy is at Andy Holloway. Jason, it is the spooky, scary show. my <laughs> so scary that is oh that is terrifying the quick question of the day mr fieri fieri oh is there a flourish on it is this more like a d sound it's like fee eddie fieri that's there you go thank you for getting my name right look what i'm always trying to learn and get names right i did not know i apologize mr guy forgive you uh, compare a player to a Halloween candy. It has been a tradition as old as time for the fantasy footballers to us to uh, for us to go here. But what do we got for this season, Jason? You can go first. Yeah, uh, look, this was really easy for me. I started backwards. I started at the candy because I knew what I was looking for, and then <laughs> and then it was so obvious because one of my favorite candies at, in Halloween are the Reese's pumpkins or the Reese's Christmas trees it, yeah the, the special Reese's peanut butter cups are oh, they're, they're fantastic to me they are better than the the originals well, 
Yeah, because they're just bigger. I mean, it's just more. Del- would you like it delicious? Or would you like it more delicious? And I would I, like more delicious. I like that the uh, like a lot of people like the ridges, you know. And look, Reese's they're they're the they're top all candy. great. Yes, but if I can remove the crispy outside and just have it all be soft, mm. that's what I like. Well, anyways, it's delicious. In the end, it is awesome uh, to 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 eat to taste. It's a great uh, Halloween candy, except. It never looks like the picture. No. no. Uh, you think you're getting a, a pumpkin. This just looks like a turd. <laughs> it's all melted. And by the time you get it out, it's just a little log. I mean, no matter it just don't look at what you're eating. Just eat it and enjoy it. And that's obviously Jalen Hurts. Obviously. Because Jalen Hurts <laughs> has been great. I mean, just enjoy the fantasy points. But do not watch. Don't watch the game because you will be like, I can't eat this. I can't play this. I cannot start. Honest to goodness, I think every week, like, is this the week I should bench Jalen Hurts? And there's no reason to do that. He's been top 10 every single week. The reason is because I've watched him. And I go, the dude sucks. But he's but he's great. But he's great. He's great for fantasy football. Yeah. Just don't watch. All right. My candy uh, comparison for the day, it's related to Christian McCaffrey. And to me, he is like... Sour Punch Straws. Oh, so good. Because Sour Punch Straws are th- my favorite candy of all time. Except when you go around on Halloween and you fill up the uh, the pillowcase, you fill up the pumpkin, you get home, you pour it out. There's not very many Sour Punch Straws. People just, they don't give them out. Probably because they're so delicious. Oh, and they so, keep them from themselves. So after like one or two packages one or two delicious uh, events yes you're out they're all gone you have no more of your uh, favorite candy i had the best candy i had the best possible situation and now it has gone far too quickly and that is what christian mccaffrey is to me it it's not because the texture is soft <laughs> so <laughs> oh christian heal up please come back to us uh so yeah he's my favorite candy but we just and I'll, I'll we get, never get to enjoy it. Look, I see Andy's in the show doc here as well, and I'll, I'll uh, honor our wonderful host and with his pick, which was Brandon Ayuk, um, is like good and plenty, which which nobody likes. Good and plenty is worthless. So that's are the, there people? No, there's not people that producers like good and back plenty. there. Do, you, do either of you like good and plenties? They're trash. Nope. Okay. Good because they're they're are they. Black licorice flavor? Is that what they are? I believe yes. so, which is just horrific. And then they take it and somehow make it worse. They've, they've, they've found a way to take black licorice and make it worse. Like, what if we paint it white and pink? Yeah. We'll, so tri- that, we'll trick the people. That's Brandon Ayuk. They're tr- he's oh. tricking the people. Oh. My apologies for Brandon Ayuk. All right. It's Halloween, but it's also Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Foot Clan Friday every week during the season. We do this for one of our beautiful, incredible supporters over at jointhefoot.com. That is our Patreon community where you can get all sorts of incredible perks, including an extra podcast every single week and a chance at being uh, shouted out here for Foot Clan Friday. But LSU Amanda, all right. that is the supporter, and she just won a Justin Jefferson signed mini helmet. Ooh, that's a good one. We gave that away? We did, that's right. unfortunately. That's dumb. Courtesy of our friends at pristineauction.com. If you want to get some of your own sports memorabilia, well, I mean, you can support us and, and maybe get picked out here, or you can go to pristineauction.com, and when you do, use the registration code BALLERS and get a $10 credit. Okay, now, now that we've now made for, it. Now for the bad part. <laughs> there was a football game last night. It was. Are, uh, we, are we done? Are we yeah. done with? Can we move on? Well, let's talk about our bet, Mike. Shall we start there? Well, okay. The, we will come. We'll build up to that. Okay. Because the night got compounded. It was a heavyweight matchup. The Green Bay Packers were taking on the Arizona Cardinals. Currently, or as of last night, they were undefeated. The Packers took them down twenty-four to twenty-one. Oh, don't you? Oh, go. yeah, baby. Are you kidding go me back, right now? Go. Taking down the undefeated Arizona Cardinals in the bird's nest. Unbelievable. Boom this shakalaka. Is... Boom oh. shakalaka. Oh, man. What is that? You are so fired. Yeah. Al Borland, you are so fired. Get this off our show. I this can't stop him. I can't stop him. What just here. happened? 
We got also, hijacked. Thank you guys for taking me to the game last night. Much what? appreciated. Yeah, well, it was a great departing gift for you and your employment here. It was fantastic. That considerate severance. What just happened? He just dumped on our on us on our show Boom, because shakalaka. because we gave him controls back there. You also gave me a lot of crap. So I was just returning. What? I don't remember doing that. I would never. To check the tape. Check the tape on that. So the Green Bay Packers end up winning. The Cardinals played a pretty terrible game. Uh, a lot of turnovers. Uh, that ended up giving Green Bay some free points. Look, on the Packers side of the ball, we Aaron Rodgers did come through with a, a multi-touchdown game by the end of it. Uh, he was playing without his top receiver, so credit to the Green Bay Packers. They installed an offensive game plan, and that game plan, you might have thought it was going to be Aaron Jones, but no, it was my dude, A.J. Dillon, who I had to play last week in our Dynasty League because I had no other options, and he, he gave me negative points. But this week, 16 for 78 on the ground. He was just demolishing the Arizona run defense. Yeah, I mean, he, he was he was very good on the ground. Obviously, he still didn't have a great fantasy day. Didn't get uh, the touchdown. Um, and, you know, Aaron Jones got as many carries, or 15 to 16. Um, and obviously, and more, Jones did score on the ground. Yeah, and, and more utilization in the passing game. Yeah, Aaron Jones had seven receptions. So, it's still the Aaron Jones show, and I would expect that A.J. Dillon's utilization was more – um, indicative of the game plan of being without all your receivers and slowing down the Cardinals offense down the Cardinals side of the ball early on in the game you saw a bomb touchdown huge play to DeAndre Hopkins who yes. was there was some worries about the hamstring coming into the game and obviously those worries were put to bed when he had a bomb touchdown and then wait a minute he kind of had a face mask penalty on that drive so he had a bomb but not a touchdown and on that he re-aggravated his hamstring so all the worries came to a head and then he was pretty much out of the game he kept coming in a little bit um, he has 10 days to rest up but I think the takeaway there is you could see how critical he is I know the Cardinals have a lot of receiving options um, AJ Green so long as we don't cut him which we should uh, oh, Christian man. Kirk uh, Rondale Moore, now Zach Ertz, but still with all those weapons, it seemed like the key cog that makes them all work, the go-to guy, Hopkins being gone, really brought this offense to a sputtering halt. Kyler, for all fantasy purposes, sucked. Oh, uh, very bad. Had a terrible game because the running backs, Chase Edmonds and James Conner, they got it done. Three Rushing touchdowns between those two guys. Two to James Conner, one James, to James Conner every week, man. It, it seems so. I mean, James Con if you if you told me James Conner gets five carries in a game, <laughs> well, then you cannot play him. And James Conner, five carries, 22 yards, two touchdowns, is likely going to end up as at least a top 15 running back, if not better. Oh, yeah. Two touchdowns, you're there. And then the game, of course. Okay, so what we got to set the stage first. We're we're all there. The Arizona Cardinals come with a miraculous uh, four down shutdown of the Green Bay Packers on the goal line. I mean, yeah. I, there was an inch away, like just a, a hair between them scoring and not. Cardinals shut them down. They managed to march all the way down the field. Now. Part of the excitement, look, it, and we know that, that uh, or if you haven't been following, but the sports book opened up in Arizona. So Jason and I were like, we're going to be there. Let's get in on, let's get some skin in on this. We wanted and a ridiculous, just an absurd, absurd. irrelevant 10 leg parlay where everything has to happen. And checked box one, checked box two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the only two we needed was for, we thought we checked nine. But we needed two more rushing yards from Chase Edmonds. But we were passing. That's not going to happen. Boom, bam. Right at the end of the game, he gets it. Chase Edmonds, a three-yard carry. What? Timeout. We just need a touchdown because the final part of our leg is simply the Arizona Cardinals to win. Which would have been great for us emotionally. Would have been bad for Al Borland emotionally, which is good for us emotionally. So, um, and then... Well, they they called up a good, nice, easy play, a little <laughs> little slant to AJ Green, who, if you have not seen the play, 
<laughs> AJ Green, I, I think the best tweet, we saw so many tweets, but the best one said that AJ Green um, suddenly. suddenly announced his retirement during a route in the fourth <laughs> quarter. Of the just on the route, just retired, stopped on the play, didn't know what was happening, and it was intercepted. The game was over, and we had a bad drive home. Yeah, so we lost the game. We lost out on a, on a huge amount of money because when a 10 leg parlay hits, it turns a small bet into a, a very big win. But we, we lost both of them. So, you know, that was cool. Yeah. We got to stop going to sweets. We got to stop We're going to games. 0 oh 2. It's just sadness. All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Big breaking news right before we started recording. Dak Prescott, who was entering the week with a sore calf, who was, I mean, he's already coming off of a bye week. They ramped him up on Thursday, and Coach Mike McCarthy said he woke up and he was very sore today so we don't have an update further than that except for it's already late in the week this is a kind of a re-aggravation so to speak of a calf injury it is possible the Dallas Cowboys will not be playing with Dak Prescott on Sunday which is a huge downgrade to all of the passing weapons for Dallas Zeke is still fine but the rest of them you have to consider moving on a, a downgrade and it, oh it's a sunday uh, night uh, game? yes that's what i was going to bring up it's a downgrade for the receiving options but at least they will be out there I, i'm not pivoting away from a cd lamb um personally uh, i think dalton schultz you might want to move away yeah i mean maybe He's been maybe not I, I i don't think i would move on because there's still the chance that dak plays okay but you have to you know, if, if if you take the chance and the gamble on Dak, it's Sunday night football. You might not and probably don't have a good pivot option. So if you don't have a pivot option, um, uh, Kirk Cousins in the same game would be would be great. Grab Kirk Cousins if yeah, he's he on your waivers, on waivers, and then you're and then you're set. But if if you can't get a Sunday night or Monday night uh, option, then you need to start a different quarterback in the Sunday morning slate in case Dak in pregame warmups goes and gets hurt but it in the, even in that situation your Amari Cooper and CD Lamb and Dalton Schultz they will take a hit but they will still play they will still have some points um prime time in Minnesota so I, I yeah I'm I'm uh it's just something you got to monitor and hopefully th they do announce before Sunday morning the actual truth and then you can make your pivot options I doubt that they will though me too. Uh, another thing to monitor, Austin Eckler, running back for the Chargers, superstar running back. He was downgraded on Thursday, did not practice with a hip injury. We don't know anything further than that. Will he or will he not play? But this it is, is it's something news. to to monitor. Oh, waivers just ran. Uh, this is it, uh, And I didn't put in. You should probably grab. I. Where do you lean? Because to me, I think that Justin Jackson is still the – more of a replacement for Eckler. It will be a timeshare, obviously, but I think that Jack Jackson gets more work than the other guys. The, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's interesting. But it's, that's unknown. Yeah, I, I don't think that you can have confidence in Roundtree. I don't think you can have confidence uh, in Jackson, but he would be my number one. I okay. mean, I, I, would, I would think that he would be the replacement. If you've got Austin Eckler, you don't have a pivot option. Um, he's who I would pick up. But whenever something like this happens where it's late in the week, and they pop up. It's all. It's it's just a bad, bad sign. Yes, uh, Debo Samuel was limited on Thursday with his calf injury. A lot of guys are limited, but you when Debo's limited, you got to bring it up because of the way that he his body has responded to injuries. The Eagles placed Miles Sanders on the injured reserve with his ankle injury, so he will miss three games. The quote was, "They expect him back essentially right after the three games," but. This is still three games where Kenny Gainwell and Boston Scott need to be picked up. I think Kenny Gainwell is a, a solid play this week, but Boston Scott is now – he's very interesting over the next three weeks as a replacement. Yeah, Kenneth Gainwell's obviously the one you want. I'm, yes. You know, I know it's, it's uh, silly to think about. He's been on the practice squad, but, you know, Jordan Howard wasn't active – in the game, obviously, last week when Miles Fair Sanders point. went down. Um, so Boston Scott did come in and was, you know, that, that backup. We know Gainwell's secure. Gainwell's going to have 
whatever role he had, plus at least a little bit more. If not, replacing Miles Sanders entirely um, as far as workload goes. But I could see a situation where Jordan Howard comes in and takes some of the first and second down work, um, and, and Boston Scott is relegated back to what he was. So I'm less confident in Scott, and I would not have picked up Jordan Howard even as a flyer for the one week because you got to see what happens before mm-hmm. you can you – know, I'm not putting Jordan Howard into my lineup, but knowing he's gone for three weeks, Miles Sanders on IR, I would be willing to take a flyer on Jordan Howard in case he is the first and second down back. Jerry Judy from the Denver Broncos appears to be on track to play Sunday. The quote is, I'm back in action. I'm ready to go. Sounds like he's ready. Uh, For the New York Jets, not great news. Corey Davis got banged up during practice, and according to their head coach, it sounds like it's not looking good for him to play. Tevin Coleman also been ruled out. Michael Carter. Yeah. Michael Carter is going to have five receptions. He should. It should give him a, at least a baseline to where you you know you have good hope. W- will this allow Crowder to be someone you would start even with Mike White at quarterback? I'd, maybe if it were still Wilson at quarterback, I'd be interested in doing it. But I, it's not it's not the worst idea. But it, that's a pretty desperate move at this point. T. Y. Hilton for the Colts did return to practice. Uh, Eric Ebron oh, limited on Thursday. We you don't laugh because he was limited no. on Thursday. Why why do you why do you chuckle, Mister Fieri? Uh, it loosens the rain for the muth the muth. Let him loose. Uh, Pat Fryer muth rookie I mean, tight end. Al- he's already kind of loose. Yeah, but I mean he's gonna get Luther. Um, <laughs> Pat Fryer muth rookie tight end for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, We'll have even more opportunity if Eric Ebron can't go or um, is limited in the game. It does sound like Devontae Parker will play. He will finally return. Uh, we'll see what that does to Jalen Waddle. That's the interesting question. I- I'll be watching Waddle's targets closely. And, of course, if you are supporting uh, this podcast at jointhefoot.com, the Injury Blitz podcast with our injury expert, Mr. Matthew Betts, that will be coming out. Is that later today, Brooks, or is that tomorrow? Later today. Later today, and you also get the Foot Clan uh, game day alerts on Sunday morning. We we send you out just before the games, so you know who's in, who's out. You don't have to go scouring the news. We take care of it for you. That was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download Sleeper and join their breaking alerts channel. Look, it's just faster than every other source. Yeah. And before we move into the fantasy forecast to get the rest of the games, I want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe. There's big news from my favorite home security company. Simply Safe just launched their new wireless outdoor security camera. That's right, guy. That's <laughs> right, they did it. Simply Safe, the system that U.S. News and World Report names the best home security system of 2021. It just got even better. Brand new outdoor security cameras engineered with all the advanced tech and security features that you want and you need to help keep you and your family safe. We're talking an ultra-wide 140-degree field of view so you can keep watch over your entire yard. Which that's, fa- that's a bit of difficult with the outdoor cameras. Where do you put it? How do you mm-hmm. get the best shot of the yard? They're handling that for you with a 1080p HD resolution and an eight times zoom. Brooks, Sir Drips a lot. That, that vault's looking probably mighty safe these days. Darn right. Thanks to our friends at Simply <laughs> Like it, it's easy to rem- it has an easy to remove rechargeable battery, so it doesn't even need an outlet. Can go anywhere on your property. That is fantastic. To learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com/footballers. What's more, Simply Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering twenty percent off your entire new system and your first month of monitoring service free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. Again, that's simplysafe.com/footballers. And we want to thank Pristine Auction. You, If you've listened to the footballers for a while, you've heard us talk about Pristine Auction. We do the buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. But, um, you know, sometimes you, you can gloss over how great they really are. We have been – we've worked with them for years and years and years. We have personally bought – so many things it's uncountable because what they whoa, have whoa, whoa. don't don't tell my wife <laughs> yeah what they have available is really unbelievable you've got authentic signatures of your favorite stars your favorite football players your favorite yes. movie stars whatever on these jerseys that you know like here's some auctions recently under a hundred dollars final price damian harris debo samuel emmanuel sanders javante williams and when i say under 100 
uh, Debo was 38 bucks finished price. What? Yeah. Items being auctioned right now, you got Najee, you got DK Metcalf, you got Derrick Henry, you got Aaron Jones. You you don't pay for anything unless you win the bid. Right. It's free to bid, and it, so you say, I want it at this price. Great. If you don't get it at that price, you don't get charged and nickel and diamond pennies and all that stupid stuff. It's a really, really great place with authentic JSA witness certified signatures. It is uh, awesome. And when you sign up, please make sure you go go sign up now. Sure. Do, do, you can sign up now and use the registration code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit to your account. That way, even if you're not ready to buy, maybe you want to buy a month from now for Christmas or something like that. Just sign up now, use the code BALLERS, and uh, be a hero with awesome gear. <laughs> yes, be a hero. Fantasy Forecast. All right. It is the rest of the matchups on yesterday's show. Panthers-Falcons. Dolphins, Bills, 49ers, Bears, Steelers, Browns, Eagles, Lions, Titans, Colts, Bengals, Jets, Rams, Texans. So those games are on yesterday's show if you want to hear that. If you missed it, it's a podcast. Guess what? You can go back. It's still there. It lives on forever. The New England Patriots at 3-4 and four, taking on the Los Angeles Chargers at 4-2. and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is the Chargers minus 4 and the over-under is set at 49. That's pretty healthy. That's not, that's not too bad. So that puts an implied team total for both teams over over uh, 22 points. How are we looking at this game? Yeah, I mean, we, we have seen several games this season from both of these teams where their defense has looked great uh, and where their defense has looked porous. So it's really a question of what are, what are we going to get this week? I love that it is in Los Angeles. I, th I think that that, in that ensures that the Chargers offense is going to be clicking and have you know a great offensive performance and if that happens it just so lines up really nicely with the New England Patriots that their offense has started getting it together with Mac Jones their running game is looking great and the Chargers you know that this is a team that can't stop the run they're 28th um in defending. I think they choose not to yeah, well I agree they they are a funnel defense where they want to shut down the pass so they're saying run the ball on us and Uncle Bill and Damian Harris, they're like, yeah, that's what we want to do. This is perfect, man. Um, yeah, so, and the Chargers are like, good. Please, right. please do that because exactly. it's, it's not the efficient way to win a football game. 100%. I, I, would be, I, I would design my defense like the Chargers. I would incentivize you to run the ball on me and not throw it well. Um, so I think Damian Harris is a phenomenal play. Agreed. He, he's been great. He's been on a hot streak, um, and uh, there's no way, no reason to go away from him. Now – the other side of that same exact coin is really like it's not even the other side. It's just the the picture around the uh, George Washington on the what, coin, like the family tree, is the fact that like they don't give anything up to wide receivers. They are the number one defense against wide receivers, the number five against quarterback. You're not throwing on the Chargers, so I'm I'm not doing the Jacoby Myers this week. Okay, I mean full PPR maybe sure, but I'm not doing any other. Um, I'm not playing with Mac Jones. I'm not playing with Kendrick Bourne, who's been on a hot streak. Like, uh, I'll look elsewhere for my wide receiver. What about Brandon Bolden? Ah, oh, man. Are you going to mess with that? I, if it's a full PPR, I think you can. Um, he should have enough of a baseline, but I, I think there are better options out there. Um, the only, the only receiving game guy that I want to play is Hunter Henry. Because he has been good, and if you're going to beat the, the Chargers in the air, it's uh, at tight end. Giving up over 16 points a game to the tight end position. So, yeah, I agree. Hunter Henry is Andy's start of the week. Over on the other side, Austin Eckler, if he plays, I'm going to play him. That's how I'm going to treat it. But the other options on that team, Justin Jackson, Larry Roundtree, and we've seen Joshua Kelly starting to get some more work uh, throughout the season. We kind of touched on it, but just – are you if Eckler is unfortunately ruled out? Are you willing to start any of those guys against uh, New England? Yeah, it's tough because you don't know who it's going to be. I, it would be Justin Jackson, but I know I know the name you're going to bring up. Is it P Ryan? No. Oh, okay. But yes, yeah, Samaje P Ryan or one of these guys. I mean, I think that the issue with all of the players, uh, everyone left here and Samaje P Ryan, is you have no guarantee of touches. You just don't know. Samaj P. Ryan could have four touches, be completely irrelevant. Boston Scott or 
Justin Jackson in case of emergency. I would take Justin Jackson because he has a chance to be the one. I don't think Boston Sky has a okay. chance to be the one. And I would take P. Ryan over over the backups here behind Austin Eckler. Keenan Allen is in yep. with his nearly 10 targets a game. Mike Williams, full practice, so he is absolutely in. And Jared Cook, uh, he's – He's a one of those. He, I, every week you can possibly stream him. I'm, I think I'm looking for a different option this particular week. You know what I hate about Jared Cook? What's that, Jason? I mean, I, as the as the resident. Cook, yes, uh, you are you are a here. man who knows about. I know about cooking. You got to do the cook by the book. Um, the 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 thing I have against Jared Cook is Donald Parham. You got to do the cooking by the book. You know you can't be lazy. Um, but Donald Parham, he's a more athletic. Younger tight end that gets some of those tight end touchdowns, and I hate it. If if all the tight end touchdowns were going to Jared Cook, I'd be really really confident, and I'm I'm not because they don't. Hold your nose and close your eyes. The Jacksonville Jaguars at one and five are taking on the Seattle Seahawks at two and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is look. The Seahawks are favored by three and a half points. The over under is forty four and a half. Now, stinky on paper NFL matchup, but is there a secret spice of fantasy football that we can extract from this matchup, Mr. Fieri? Yes, there is, and it's the running game of both teams. Okay. This is going to be a lower scoring game where the, the passing game, I, I think that the, the, the Seahawks defense has stepped it up in the absence of Russell Wilson. They're, you know they, they realize that this is how they're going to have to win games. And so I don't love the the Jaguars passing options, but they've still not been great against the run. They're the second worst for fantasy points given up to running backs. Uh, and and no matter what I say, James Robinson, you're going to start him because he's just been – Correct. He's been unstoppable. But on the other side of the ball, Alex Collins, to me, is a really, really good play. I mean, you, you want to run the ball against the Jaguars because you have as good a chance – Is that as because you, you have Geno Smith? It, well, it's one, it's because you have Geno Smith, and it's because you could be in the lead. Now, because of Geno Smith, you could not be in the lead. But because of the Jaguars, you could be in the lead. So this is like a triangle system here of, of options. But I think if you look at the, need a graph. the workload of um, Alex Collins. It seems safe. <laughs> um, that is, that's a triangle. Th yep. Uh, okay. So the, the workload of Alex Collins has been great. The last three games, he's averaging 18.7 opportunities a game. He was inefficient last week, but last week was against the New Orleans Saints in a rainy game. You still saw that he was the dude. Um, I think Alex Collins a great play. It looked like they were trying to make Penny the dude. They, and, they, they and got then him. he did. He was not the dude. I don't think they were ever trying. I think they just brought him in. Like they gave a drive to Alex Collins, and then they're like, "Okay, Rashad Penny, you're up. Let's see what you got. Okay, you got nothing. Uh, let's go back to Alex back Collins." Back to Collins. Marvin Jones is he's worth a play as a lower end wide receiver too. What are you doing with DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett? Uh, Tyler Lockett is a bench for me. Uh, I am treating so Tyler Lockett is incredibly difficult because yes, I get he he disappears sometimes with, with Russell Wilson, but the way I am treating Tyler Tyler Lockett is almost like he is the one who is hurt, like. Russell Wilson is 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 the actual human who is physically hurt, but Tyler Lockett's hurt. I can't put him in my IR, but I'm going to hold on to him on my bench. I'm not dropping him. Russell Wilson will be back in at least a couple of weeks, and the fantasy football season, while it seems like it, it, it's moving rapidly, we're still only at just around the halfway point. So yeah, we're not halfway there yet. So I'm holding on to Lockett. DK Metcalf is. He's still he's gigantic. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, I mean, he's gigantic. He's, he's gigantic. athletic, so you can start him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, Lockett can do can have one of those eighty-yard touchdowns as well. But DK Metcalf is just seems more likely to be involved. Lavisca Chenault. I mean, no, yeah, no, no, thank you until I'm proven otherwise. And then the tight ends, the Jaguars. It's a good matchup to attack with the tight end position. They are. Ranked, ranked 29th, giving up over 15 fantasy points a game. They, they Are were, you rolling with Gerald? Same matchup. Would you roll with Gerald Everett, or would you go with the postman, Dan Arnold, on the other side? I would go with the postman because I think, uh, you know, if one of these quarterbacks is going to get it done, it's going to be Trevor Lawrence. They actually – I felt like they really tried to – get Everett more involved last week they gave him a carry a couple of targets he did nothing because 
their offense could do nothing. And, and granted, it was still good defense and a bad weather game. So I'll, I'm keeping my eyes on Everett, but I'm not gonna. I don't have any confidence to actually plug him in a lineup. The Washington football team is two and five, taking on the Denver Broncos at three and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Broncos favored by three and a half points, and the over/under is at forty-four and a half. Washington has been disappointing. You have Taylor Heineke, who it in the right matchup you can definitely stream him, but against the Broncos, who are number three currently against fantasy quarterbacks, that is a no, thank you. With a somewhat hobbled Terry McLaurin. I mean, right. he's he's obviously he's he practiced on full uh practiced full on Thursday and you know, he's going to be out there. So this isn't a worry of you need are to you, pivot. Are you considering benching Terry McLaurin? I'm not considering benching Terry okay. McLaurin because I'm of how not. good Terry McLaurin is, but I am looking at the rest of my lineup and saying I I you know, I need more because I don't think Terry McLaurin is going to have a great game. Um, and his whatever limitation he has will certainly make the the stinky Heine, Heine um, unplayable. <laughs> okay, we're not considering benching Terry McLaurin, but are we considering the Denver Broncos are top ten against fantasy running backs, giving up under twenty fantasy points a week to the position? Are you considering benching my champion Antonio Gibson? Man, that's really, really hard. I would play someone like Alex Collins ahead of him, but I don't think that most rosters have the ability to bench Antonio Chuba Gibson. Hubbard against Atlanta or I would Antonio Gibson. Play Chuba. That makes me sad. Yeah, I mean it, it is sad. I don't hear what I'm not saying. I I think Chuba and Alex that Collins makes me are really sad. Are are fine starts this week. They're not great, but they're fine. Um, you can definitely start. Uh, you know, you can start your champion, Antonio Gibson. He has touchdown upside. He Zach has... Moss against Miami. I'll yeah. go Gibson there. Okay. Whew. Okay. Okay. We got one. <sighs> we didn't fall that far? That's great news. On the other oh, – J.D. McKissick smooches like 61 and 64% of the snaps the last couple weeks. PPR leagues. PPR leagues. I... Gosh. You got me on that uh... one. Did he get you? He did. I don't know why it, you – you uh, forget about it, probably because I'm I'm focused on giving like hardcore mm -hmm. hitting fantasy football You're analysis. You're working hard over there, Mike. You're I'm working not a, hard. Do I look like a clown to you? No, you don't look like a. Clown. Do I look stupid? Yes, but no, you sir. don't look like a clown. You look more like a budget magician. <laughs> wait, so oh, wait, show. Oh, there's, See ya! The, there's the cards. And also, everyone, go to YouTube uh, <laughs> real quick because he does have a magic trick, and this won't play on the audio version of the podcast, but it's incredible. I'm gonna, say, I'll save it. I'll oh, save you're it. For, okay, yeah, save, save it for it. Yeah, what for a when teaser. you're not. <laughs> what a te Well, no, I want them to know it's that 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 it's coming. It's a, it's incredible. Um, okay, we'll we'll save that for later. All Anything right. else in this game? Okay, like, we haven't talked about the Denver side. Yeah, so Teddy Bridgewater to me is absolutely in play as a streaming option. I I shouted him out as my start of the week, not because I think he's a top five guy this week, but things are getting crazy in fantasy football right now, and I think that Teddy is worth playing with the return of Jerry Judy. How do you think – Jerry? Well, I mean, we're going to see in a week, but we're going to try and project. How do you think Jerry Judy's return will impact – Cortland Sutton, who has been very solid, he's been the king of the air yards. He is, he is who you would, you hoped he would be. But Jerry Judy in Week One was that dude. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, you got to flash I, back to Week One. Cortland Sutton just coming off of the ACL. Yeah, I, I, Judy I, breaking out. I think Cortland Sutton is primarily unaffected by Jerry Judy. I think that there is enough. Um, an, just just enough talent in Teddy Bridgewater okay. to fully support those two wide receivers. I think the biggest impact is probably on Noah Fant. Um, you know, I Corlin Sutton, I think, is going to get his. He demands his. And I think Jerry Judy's going to get his. He demands his. Um, he was looking so good in his first game. Now, it'll be interesting. We'll, we'll find that in a week, whether they ease him in. I don't think so. I think they've waited long enough. He's ready to go. In week one... In 47% of the snaps, he had already seen seven targets, which he turned into six for 72. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm He was about to ball out. I'm excited to see his return. Um, I'm, I'm probably looking 
for a different, better option over Noah Fant. Obviously, you know, uh, Tyler Higby. Um, I so would, is Judy right into your redraft starting lineups? He, he is absolutely right into okay. my flex consideration. He's not a must-start guy. The matchup but I'm not, is there. Yeah, but I'm not, like, afraid of, well, I have to wait a week to see. Uh, he, I, I believe he is going to be involved in the offense and his role now that he's back. And what about the running backs? What are we doing there? Well, we're splitting them. <laughs> I mean, you, okay. right now, until I, I think until their bye week in a couple of weeks, you're just going to see more of what you've seen. Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams are going to have uh, similar touches, similar opportunities. This is a week you can play them. This is the Jacksonville or uh, Washington football. This team. is the Washington football team that's defense has been very poor. I expect Denver, who has been putrid the last month, just so bad. I think this is their get-right game. They're at home against Washington with Jerry Judy back. If they have a lead um, and their defense can stop a hobbled, injured Washington football team's offense, then this is where Javante Williams can have a good game. Melvin Gordon can have a good game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 6-1, and one, traveling to New Orleans to tank on the Saints, who are 4-2. and two. The DK Sportsbook line is has the Buccaneers favored by four and a half points, and the over-under is at 50 and a half. Jason, it's time. Jameis Winston, mm. does he get his revenge no. against Bruce and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? No. You didn't let me finish. <laughs> well, I didn't want <laughs> to lend too much credence. Um, Jameis Winston has been an enigma. You, you, when they show the uh, the touchdowns, the interception rate, it's unbelievable. There's a playing card in my water. <laughs> oh, nice. What a magic trick. I, sh I should have just... Oh, oh. oh, incredible work, magician. Oh, now it's dripping all over me. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that seems, that seems right for the costume. Matt Nagy accidentally doing things that he finds. He's like, oh, this could be cool. No, this backfired. Um, yeah, I mean, this... this I honestly went... Who put a playing card in my water and I didn't see it happen? But it was me. That's the answer. Yeah. So what do you what do you make of uh, this game? Uh, the Saints defense has been locked down. Um, they've given up a little bit through the air, and 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 you know they lost Marshawn Lattimore for a time, um, and so that factors in. But Lattimore is back, and then outside of that, they've just been absolute. They're top five against quarterback, top five against running back, top five against tight end. Um, they're a brutal matchup, yes. but they're going against one of the best offenses in the league with uh, Tom Brady. Any hesitation to start, Tom? Mm -mm. Would you like? Would you pivot to Kirk Cousins? No, I I wouldn't. Okay, I would not either. Uh, his weapons, Leonard Fournette. It doesn't matter if the the matchup is terrible. He is one of four running backs with ninety plus rush attempts and twenty five receptions. The other being Najee, Kamara, and Aaron Jones. So. I mean, yeah. the Leonard Fournette RB1 season is real, and it's going to continue to happen for the foreseeable future. When you talk about Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, Najee Harris, and Leonard Fournette, it just feels like one of these things is not like the other. Um, but it's important to realize that's the utilization he's getting. He's a must-start, locked-in guy because he's so involved in the passing game as well. That's That's what puts him over the top. This is a terrible matchup, but if he catches five passes, which is in his range of outcomes, He's going to be fine. His career is so bizarre. Because he was drafted to he be was great. A, he, where was he drafted? Like number four? Yeah, I think it was four. I mean, yeah, some, someone vet We that. can vet that. But again, he was a top ten pick. Um, and he was drafted to be, you know, a, a quote, generational running back. He was the, the best, oh my gosh, the best player since Adrian Peterson. Yes. The amount that that was thrown around when he was coming into the league. Um, obviously went ahead of Christian McCaffrey, right? And, um, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm zapping in, the television on and off. In the, uh, but yeah, and so he went to Jacksonville. He's solid for fantasy football because he's getting so much volume. But he uh, sucked. But he was, yeah, he was not, he wasn't great. He was inefficient, ineffective. And then he got then cut. Then he got cut. And now, he, and now he is the player that, that Jacksonville thought they drafted, but he's doing it on a different team. Uh, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, they are absolutely locked into your starting lineups with a, uh, Antonio Brown out for we don't know how long, uh, but at least, sounds like at least three weeks. 
I will say if like somehow you had to choose between the two, maybe it's for DFS. I'm going with Chris Godwin this week as there is a history of Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore. And not that Mike Evans can't get it done, but historically Lattimore has gotten the the better of Mike Evans. Gronk is expected back. Are is this I would right in? To, I would love to take a wait and see approach because there's look, Gronk's been great when he was out there and he certainly has a chance at a touchdown. However, there's two things working against him. One is the defense, very difficult, like I said, top five against tight end and his injury. He's just coming back. He takes a hard hit to the ribs again and has to exit. I would rather wait one week and play him starting, you know, going forward. Marquez Callaway for the New Orleans Saints. He has seen seven and eight targets respectively the the past couple weeks. With this matchup against Tampa Bay, they're going to want to control the clock, but they will have to throw. And you can't because that's – you can. You can throw on the Bucks. Is there any chance you're playing – Callaway as a desperation flex. I mean, as a desperation flex, the math checks out. Um, now, I will say that Traquan Smith was back last week. Seemed like they were trying to get him involved unsuccessfully, very unsuccessfully. Yes. Um, but he's my worry here. You for, know how many snaps he played or the percent? Oh, I'm going to guess 55. <laughs> very nice. Um, yeah, so I he's a desperation play. Um but I would pre I would really prefer to not have him. Like I I talked earlier about I don't want to play Jacoby Myers. I would play Jacoby Myers. Okay, okay, ahead Callaway. of okay, that's Marcus good Callaway. context. Alvin Kamara is in. Mark Ingram, newly acquired running back that they just traded for. He does have a good chance to play. I can't imagine in the, maybe if somehow they're like they're playing Washington, they're they're playing the Chargers, they're playing one of these teams that you can run on. Maybe then Mark Ingram can go right in. Uh, as he changes teams, but yeah, not here. You're but not, not here. Uh, you're just going to hold and see what happens. Sunday night football: the Dallas Cowboys five and one, Minnesota Vikings three and three. DK Sportsbook line has currently Minnesota favored by two and a half. If Dak Prescott is in fact out, that line is going to change. It's going to get larger. But the over under right now is fifty three and a half points. So we kind of have to <laughs> let's start in Minnesota because that's easier we know what's going on Kirk Cousins is Andy's start of the week Adam Thielen is my start of the week Dalvin Cook is everybody's start of the week on on a weekly basis honestly the Kirk Cousins Adam Thielen stack takes a massive hit here if Dak Prescott is gone part of the reason why interesting because they won't have to you mean? exactly right part of the reason that I, I picked Adam Thielen as my start of the week is when you look at certain matchups and you say they're going to need to pass the ball, they can't just rely on Dalvin Cook in this matchup, that's the Dallas Cowboys with Dak Prescott. That's not the Dallas Cowboys without Dak Prescott. Now, Adam Thielen is, still has a history of torching. You're not pivoting the, away from The Dallas him, Cowboys. No, I'm not pivoting him away. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not. But um, it, it is – they are affected by it. Um, so I think just the whole world, everyone outside of – Vikings fans are hoping that Dak Prescott plays. Justin Jefferson is locked in. Tyler Conklin. Conk. Conk. Look, I mean, he's interesting. He is targeted on 17% of his routes, and that's a higher number than Dawson Knox. That's a higher number than Tyler Higby. And the matchup says it's not a terrible streaming option here. So Tyler Conklin is – he's not – He's a DFS for me. option for me. Um, because you know you you could save in DFS you're gonna save money by going lower than you want to go to put to other players you don't get that in a redraft league in a redraft league you're just choosing a lower tight end than others you would start on the Cowboys side of the ball all right let's go through it Dak is playing okay okay great awesome no this this is the, the I hear I heard you he's active break ba -da -dun 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 -dun. Dak is active great all right if Dak is active it's actually very easy Zeke is in Amari is in CeeDee Lamb is in Dalton Schultz is in Michael Gallup is practicing he has not yet been activated we're not sure if he will be or not I don't bring that up for that I'm super excited to play Michael Gallup I bring that up that Dalton Schultz has been seeing a very healthy target share mm -hmm. in the absence of Michael Gallup, and I th I think that could be affected. It I don't it doesn't destroy it because look Dak Dak favors he likes those matchups he likes finding his big tight end to to target and that is Dalton Schultz this year 
So it's I'm not downgrading him to like he's not a tight end one anymore. It's just something that you should probably keep your eye on. Yeah, there there will be a target or two in the middle of the field that might go to a healthy Michael Gallup wide open over um you know the bigger slower tight end. But Dak has always Dak used Jason Witten. Yes, he did. And there was a reason you liked Blake Jarwin so much before he went down to his knee injury. Um, Schultz will get his, but it's worth monitoring to see if any of the routes run changes that that's the one thing I'm curious about because the targets you're not going to know if one or two would have been there or wouldn't have been there but if he ends up running fewer routes if Michael Gallup is active that'll be more telling Tony Pollard since week two is averaging nearly 14 opportunities a game are you playing him as a low end running back two or a flex or are you avoiding that now Week two was the that was the huge game where it was uh, Zeke is dead, uh, all hail Tony Pollard. Hasn't really worked out because since then he has not finished inside the top twenty four. But he he still has a a floor of points that he can give you, and he can explode like he did in week two. Yeah, if Dak is playing, I think he's someone that you can put in for that eight to ten point range and hope for the the touchdowns to come. Um, so, you know, if, if you're in a pinch, if you're in a bind, that's what you can expect out of them. Look at your roster and see if that works for you. Okay. Dak is not playing. Oh, no. Ba -da -dum -ba -dum -ba. Now what are you doing? Is everyone still in and you're just well, adjusting Zeke, your expectations? Zeke is in. Lamb is in. Okay. Those, those two are locked. Um, Amari Cooper, I would probably have a very difficult time benching Amari Cooper. Did you see this quote here? Cooper says, I feel healthy as close to 100% that I'll be. Yeah. Now, yep. if you're as close to 100%, either you are 100% or you can never, if you're as close as you can be, it means you can never, ever be 100%. That's and that what means that your ceiling is like 92%. That's, that's what he's saying. He's saying this is football. I'm never, I'm not getting back to 100%. Oh, the magic trick. Oh, the magic <laughs> trick is here. There, there it is. Incredible. And here I it is. break my one into two. <laughs> wow. Wow. Matt and Aggie That's doing right, incredible I did it. work on the YouTube. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Amari Cooper is, you know, he, he knows his limitations. He's not getting back to 100%, which is a shame because we saw week one, the, the dominant upside of Amari Cooper. Um, I think I'm going to play him. Okay. The matchup, it's prime time, even without Dak. I'm not going to go with Tony Pollard. I'm not going to go with Michael Gallup. Um, and Dalton Schultz becomes iffy without Dak. All right, the Monday night matchup. We have the New York Giants at 2-5, and five, taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, who are 3-4. and four. Oh, sub-500. Still <sighs> getting the respect from the sportsbook, though. The, uh, the DraftKings sportsbook line is Kansas City favored by 9.5, over under at 52. If you don't want to do the math, that puts the Kansas City Chiefs at an implied team total of over 31 points. One of these quarterbacks leads the league in turnovers, and the other has oh, only no. thrown interceptions in two of his seven games this year. No. Both have two top six performances on the season. I mean, that's... They're basically. I mean, that's got Mahomes is leading the league. Yes, he is. You are. Were you unaware that Mahomes is leading the league? In I guess I hadn't really thought about it. Or in interceptions, I should say. Yeah. Interceptions bouncing off of people's hands. Yes. Um. And and that's what happens when you are forced to play from behind. Like when you're playing from a lead and throwing the ball a lot, it is very different. The defenses that you're seeing are very different than when you're playing from behind and you're throwing the ball a lot and you're trying to play a little quicker than your pace you're trying to come back and win T turnovers happen in those situations that's not what Patrick Mahomes has been used to and the Kansas City Chiefs defense is objectively bad yeah um, so that means Daniel Jones is in play here as a fantasy option obviously Patrick Mahomes is in Tyreek Hill is in Travis Kelsey is in um, I think you can play uh, Daryl Williams as well those four players are probably in your lineup, nothing else for the Chiefs. So the real interesting stuff here is on the Giants' side of the ball is the the wide receiver core. I mean, that is a that is literally just a yeah, carousel who, of – Who is in? So here's the update. Kenny Galladay not practicing on Friday. So he's I, not in. I would expect him to be out. Kadarius Toney 
returns today to be limited. That would give him a chance to play. I expect Kadarius Tony to miss this week. Okay. Sterling Shepard, he returned yesterday on Thursday and was limited. So it seems like he will be out there. Seems like it'll be Shepard, Darius Slayton, Dante Pettis available for this game. Shepard being still questionable. Um but if Shepard is active in a game against the Chiefs with a bad defense and obviously a great offense, I, I have worries of the hamstring. And whenever it continues to pop up, like, like I, already, I already know he's going to leave this game with a hamstring issue. But Don't I still don't say that. I still feel like. I gotta believe. You know, I still feel like I, I want to play him because he could end up with 10 receptions easy. And Devontae Booker. Over the last three games, after taking over for Saquon Barkley, he's averaging nearly 18 opportunities a game. The volume is there. <laughs> the matchup is honestly not that bad. So he is – I'm playing him as a top 24 type of a running back. Sure. Yeah, yeah but he is. Do you is. have any other notes? I mean – Your start of the week because you hate yourself and you hate the Foot Clan. Because I like, Ingram. I like to provide a streaming tight end that I think can get it done and have at least a safe floor. Just too many years of – him hurting people. I understand, but... He, not games. I, years! I s still believe. Oh, man. Dude, he's, he's so fast. He is very athletic. He's too fast for his hands. Apparently. That's what it is. He's too fast, too fast for his hands. Uh, I, I don't get it, man. He should be... I. He should be awesome. He should be awesome. He literally has the best rookie tight end. See, we always talk about Kyle Pitts this year about like – Kyle Pitts is going to break it, oh, but yes. Yes, I, I, he should, and I hope he does. But the best rookie tight end season of all time that we keep alluding to, that's this dude. That's Evan Ingram. <sighs> what could have and should have been. The rankings are available at thefantasyfootballers.com, including our start sit tool. Brooks, do we have any updates while we were performing our show here? I uh, just confirmed that Baker Mayfield will start this week oh. against the Steelers. Okie dokie. Well, there you go. All right, good for the Browns. It's, it's the end of Friday's show. That means we have one more segment to take care of. Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. Last week's results, I eked out a victory over Jason by about four points. Once again. This yeah. is two weeks in a row where we both had great lineups, but you beat me by a couple of points. And then Andy um, gets to get out of his punishment this week. Yeah, We're not now. letting him out oh, of a punishment. Never. I mean, that wheel of shame will just be doubled up next week. Well, it probably won't be. Because I assume he'll lose next week. Yeah, we tripled up. And, and uh, then and uh, then uh, uh, you know, and so he'll he'll just keep pushing back week after week after week all right let's set those lineups jason uh and i know that you have andy's I do. lineup ready so that we can also share what he is doing so at the quarterback position andy is going with matt ryan only 5900 okay interesting uh i it's against carolina a tough matchup but you're you're saving a lot of money there i'm going josh allen he was one you're of those paying up i am paying up is he the, the most expensive qb he is and he's the only great one available because all of the other great quarterbacks are all either, you know, Lamar's on by, Patrick Mahomes, and all these other guys are on different slates. So if you want guaranteed points at quarterback, it's Josh Allen. You're going to pay up. He's 8100 That's the way I went. I'm saving money. And this name's going to surprise you, Jason. He's taking on the Tennessee Titans, so oh, I like the matchup. That's my stream of the week. $5,700. I am going with Carson when so Carson, speaking of hating myself Carson Wentz <laughs> does not surprise me it's a great pick but you're right because I I guess I didn't think about the fact that it is you yes Mike Wright who is not only endorsing but personally using Carson Wentz for fantasy football oh man this is going to either hurt or feel really good it's a Halloween weekend spooky things happen okay at running back uh, it looks like the, a couple of great options here for Andy uh, that he was able to save from uh, Matt Ryan at quarterback. He's got Joe Mixon. Same. And he's got – I mean, Joe Mixon against the Jets. I've been talking about P. Ryan. Joe Mixon's going to murder them. Uh, and and uh, uh, Damian Harris, which we mm, talked about. I considered, I considered going with Damian Harris, but I, also, I have Joe Mixon as well. And then at 6,500, 
Against the Houston Texans, I am taking Daryl Henderson. I have Daryl Henderson as well in yeah. my lineup. I think that is a smash play at Agreed. that price. And I am not writing dirty. I will have Derrick Henry in my lineup. <laughs> so Derrick Henry. Wait, so you have you have yes. the top QB in salary, mm -hmm. top running back in salary. That is true. So you will see where I saved. I I started my cash. You're games. starting a pair of dirty socks in the flex, aren't you? No, I I like I like this lineup. We'll we'll see how okay. it rolls out. But um, who does yes. Andy have at wide out? So at wide receiver, this is where he's really got a, a trio of great options. He's going with Cooper Cup. Oh, uh, at Ooh. nine thousand, paying up. Keenan okay. Allen at sixty five hundred. Okay, and Chris Godwin. I think Chris Godwin's a great play at sixty four hundred. So he's smashing wide receivers hard. At wide receiver, this is where I save my money to get Josh Allen and Derrick Henry. I'm going Michael Pittman Jr. Okay, only fifty three hundred. Your start of the week. I'm going Emmanuel Sanders, only fifty four hundred. Andy's start of the week. Um, and I'm going Jerry Judy, forty nine hundred. Uh, he's, he's mispriced if he's utilized, if he's certainly, if he's healthy, active and on the field in a great matchup, he should not be sub 5,000. Well, it, we live in a world of absurdity, Jason, because I'm playing Carson Wentz. You know, that means Michael Pittman is in my lineup for, for sure. the stack. Uh, I found a wide receiver who I think is fantastic and the, the price is just totally inappropriate. It's Jerry Judy. From the Denver Broncos, oh, returning at forty nine hundred dollars. What a great pick at that price! Uh, it will just let's just keep this going because at fifty four hundred, Emmanuel Sanders is in my flex. All right, uh, but that leaves my other wide receiver, who I alluded to it during the New Orleans matchup, Chris Godwin at sixty four hundred. I love both Evans and Godwin, but I prefer Godwin. And so, so the, a those, lot of crossover at wide receiver yes. between the three of us this week. Um, at, at flex, uh, Andy has Russell Gage saved some cash there. Okay, so he's got his Matt Ryan Russell Gage stack. Yes, the budget stack. The budget. And stack. I know about saving money. <laughs> the budget magician <laughs> over here. Um, and I have Alex Collins in my flex. So okay, I, I think that was good. Um, you know, good value at uh, fifty three hundred. Both Andy and I have Dan Arnold at tight end. Saving a ton of money okay. down at what's tw he twenty eight hundred. Wow, he is sub three thousand. It was really hard for me this week to find an affordable tight end, so he was he was a guy that that fit the bill. And then uh, Andy's got the Washington. Andy is rocking the Washington football defense. Who do you have at uh, tight end? So my defense? tight end, I paid up a little bit. I'm going with Mike Kosicki. The, oh, mat okay. the matchup is brutal against the Buffalo Bills, but. Gasicki has quietly been a dominant force at the fantasy uh, tight end position. And then my defense, I don't know how you don't pay 3600 for the, the Cincinnati Bengals against the New York Jets and uh, the debut of Mike White. Yeah, I mean, that, that is... Al Corey Davis. That's where you can catch up on Andy and I. I've got the Seahawks, um, okay. which I think, you know, I've talked about their defense stepping up without Russell Wilson, good matchup um, against Jacksonville Jaguars, so... We shall see if Andy can lose three in a row. If you can win three in a row. I would be delighted. We will see. If you want to get in on this action, download the DraftKings app. Now use the code BALLERS. This week, new customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. It's a minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. That's going to do it for this spooky Halloween Ooh, show. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for the team, for the producers, it is I, Matt Nagy, the budget magician, with my best friend, <laughs> Guy Fieri. But, like, of course people didn't realize that Nagy and Guy Fieri oh, are best friends. Best of friends. Hey, I'll see you on Sunday for Sunday Live. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.